All right, folks, here's the progress on the cells. And for those wondering, this is only part one. What I'm doing is trying to test various solid state electrolytes. I think I hit on something here, so I'm just testing the electrolyte properties very quickly. This is very crude and not optimal, not the way you'd want to work with. But eventually, I'd like to figure out a way to mold these into thin wafers and use this, adapt it in my... Um, final project that I'm working on if you've been watching my earlier videos which is a hybrid Zamboni like pile at thousands of volts so that's my ultimate goal so some people have asked you know what do you want to run on these so I don't want to run anything per se but <clears throat> nothing stops you or anyone else if this is what they like and they want to just experiment with these as is you can but you got to understand that it will be mostly an electrostatic effect for so as is very little current but needless to say um it may not run big heaters and big light bulbs and whatnot but those who follow me know that this stuff charges capacitors really quickly and can also run oscillators here so just to give you an example of that so here's just a regular LED running off one of the stacks here. So there's my LED. And um, this is disconnected right now. I was experimenting with the uh, oscillator. It works, by the way. And it charges capacitors. So I got one cell on its own. Very, very hard, by the way. All dry now. And uh, it charges a capacitor. So now I'm at 1.37 volts. And, you know, it doesn't like running as is a motor but through the capacitor no problem you see and it holds up pretty good so the motor runs well and it keeps the voltage up you know it's going to obviously go down but the point is you know this is a traditional circuit we're not doing anything you know um, fancy here closed loop dc motor but the point is all this energy comes from this cell over here and it does very good at charging capacitors very quickly because capacitors offer very little resistance in relative to batteries so they're easy because you're just a little bit of current for the field displacement and once you get established that you're good to go so with that said with this stack here I can charge these super capacitors here which are um, 14 volts stacked so it allows me to run 12 volts inverters like this one here and this will run folks a, a 25 watt led bulb for like 20 minutes no problem very bright and it charges from this now if you're trying to enhance this is really crude again i'm just testing the electrolyte i want to see how long it takes to dry what happens to the voltage can i make it dry faster slower but ideally, if you're just going to stop here and you want any kind of current, what works best is to have your, your plates, your electrodes as close possible as they can squished like a sandwich, yet not shorted out. So the closer they are, the more current you'll get. And this is working pretty good. You see, I'm still gunning the motor running here. And it's holding pretty good. And nothing fancy, just one capacitor at this point to help it out. Because as I've said, these things are not very good for traditional current on their own, but we can convert that to real current with the help of capacitors. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a very um, complicated setup either. It could be relatively straightforward and easy. So it runs motors, it runs LEDs, it stacks so charge super capacitor banks. But again, this is not my final project. What I want to do eventually, and I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to mold a hybrid Zamboni pile and get thousands of volts using different mechanisms, a layered of different cells, piezoelectric capacitor cells um, stacked in series with uh, electric cells stacked in series with these crystal-like cells. But it's more um, polymer-based, this kind of electrolyte. So you could have polymers or crystalline. This is, I chose the polymer method. So just thought I cleared that all out of the way because some people are like, tartar and 
<laughs> baking soda and that sort of thing and it's like no 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 folks I'm not trying to uh, grow crystal here this is a relatively spontaneous reaction you mix it up into a paste with just water and then you let it harden but some have suggested um, in an oven to cool uh, to um, harden it fast and give it a charge while it hardens so perhaps that could align some of the molecular dipoles and would facilitate in uh, them providing more of a potential output after. So there's several more experiments that I have yet to do. It's in the works, folks. So I know a lot of people ask questions. What if I do this? What if I do that? I'm really showing to it all to you live as I'm moving along here. So a lot of it I still don't have the answers for. So it's looking promising. I think I will be using this electrolyte mix because it's turning out well. Our motor's running very nicely here since I turned it on. And you can see it's fighting it. It's trying to bring that, it's trying to charge it back up. These are not running the motor. I just have an LED here to show you there's something there because I charge my super caps with it. Yes, I get it. It might take six hours without any um, fancy systems. But my point here is these will re-gauge. So you could keep dumping and dumping and dumping and dumping. But again, this is not what I want to do, but I understand some people would be more than happy with this kind of a setup or they have their own ideas. So I'd like to share all the information. I did these cells yesterday, so I had to wait for them to dry. This one was already made, so it's working very, very well. So don't, don't, don't mess with it if it ain't broken. So this is the one here on the motor. If I'm reading that, the motor's taking um, 17 MA. So again, not big current stuff, folks, as is, unless you'd modify this, because, you know, um, I don't know if I can find it here. Uh, if I have one, I can show you. I think I do. Because I've got these cell assemblies here for regular galvanic-like experiments here. And you see, just because it's more of a professional assembly where the anode and cathode plate are basically squished together in that configuration, I'm able to get like 500 MA. But that's because it's, it's a more professional constructed craft in, versus having it all in a cupcake in the open like this, right? Just, just putting it out there in the perspective too, you know? So this is still running about seven minutes, I mean, and we're still over one volt. So this is what I mean by um, self-regaging. And of course, if I drop the motor, the charge is quickly going to start creeping back up because the cell is still doing its thing. So here it is now running through the uh, Jewel Thief. This is basically the closest equivalent of um, the Bedini version of uh, his crystal battery single cell light, but I'm using a polymer-based electrolyte instead. And it's going through this, and it's holding pretty good. And very, very bright. It's very bright. And this is the other one here running beside it, just directly off the cell here. On another stack. But the Jewel Thief really boosts it for single cell.